I pray you finish empty. I pray you finish empty. Do not leave this world with the deposit that God has put on the inside of you. I don't know, I don't know how many other ways I can say that. Please, before you leave, let us meet the real you. Let us meet the phenomenal you. But sometimes we can't understand why God deviates us in life, why God removes certain things. And so we start complaining about it. Why did you take this person? Why did you didn't let this happen? And God's saying, I'm trying to make sure that your life is successful in the end, but you can't stop but complaining. <laughs> Satan's greatest weapon against most people is their own ignorance. See, when you don't know, you're not empowered. When you don't know, see, you draw your confidence from what you know. That's why you have to know that God is for you and not against you. So you can draw confidence from that. So when it gets tough, you can say to yourself, like David encouraged himself, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed beg for. Yeah, I know it took them out, but not here. This too shall pass because I know something. Think, just think about that. You lost your life because someone squeezed in on a traffic jam. That little space meant that much to you that you lost your life. Stop the car, got out of the car. What are you doing? And they get out of the car. Over, think about it, like people are losing their lives over petty stuff, over petty stuff. Anybody here ever took a pause in front of the mirror and be like, man, you all right. Am I the only one? Like, you're like, you know what? God did his thing. Look, look at that. <laughs> wow. It's only one of me. It's only one of me. I talk to you. Talk. When you start investigating yourself, it gives you a deeper appreciation for Jesus. Like, look, look what God died for. Amen. The blessing requires the promise. The blessing requires the promise. The promise requires patience. I was patient, I have the promise. But in order to get the blessing, I gotta turn over the promise. That's Isaac. And so what happens is when we first interact and we meet God, we have to legitimately look at what his culture demands of us and look at the culture that we're coming out of and anything in his culture that does not match our current culture has to change. It has to subside, it has to give way. God is extremely intentional. Like this life that you're walking and this life that you're living, it really is a two on two, it's like it's you and God. From the standpoint is God has this purpose for your life that he already planned for you and it's just you getting in alignment with that plan and you'll see things begin to happen, right? God already determined for Joseph to be in the palace. So you know what? The pit couldn't stop him. Being a slave in Potiphar's house couldn't stop him. Going to prison couldn't stop him. Why? Because when God determines for you to be somewhere, and you're in agreement with that, no obstacle can stop you. The only person that can block God's plan for your life is you. You're the only person that can avoid it. So what the enemy does is he brings fear, he brings doubt, he brings all these types of things in front of you and make you look at the storm and you check out of life. We assume too much as people. We don't say thank you enough. We don't say please enough we don't say excuse me enough we don't say i'm sorry enough we assume too much as a society as a people let's practice real quick repeat after me thank you thank you how'd that feel it felt good right one more time say thank you thank you see what you have to understand is this gratefulness shines a light and acknowledges the source. You're welcome. Gr gratefulness shines a light and acknowledges the source.